So in dealing with logarithms, there are these three properties that get used all the time to, to simplify and manipulate equations. And, you know, a lot of times they're just taught, say, hey, memorize them, but I just want to show where they come from because, um, because it's interesting, I think. So I'm going to prove or justify these three separate rules. So the first one's the power rule. It says we have a log base A of X raised to the power of N. We can rewrite that as N times log base A of X. If we have log base A of X times Y, we can write that as log base A of X plus log base A of Y. And if we have division uh, in, instead of multiplication, we end up getting subtraction instead of addition. So to, to justify these three results, really the only things that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the definition of a logarithm. So remember, you can switch from uh, a logarithm to exponential notation. I'm going to just switch back and forth uh, using, using this definition. And also there's this cancellation property that says if you have log base A of A raised to the power of X, that simply equals X. Okay, so I'm going to make use of these two, these two properties along with properties of exponents. Okay, so let's start off simply by showing, let's show that log base A of X raised to the power of N is N times log base A of X. And it'll take a few minutes to go through these, but uh, shouldn't be too bad. So the first thing we do, the first way to justify, uh, the first step to justify this is just to do a little relabeling. So I'm going to let M equal log base A of just X. So not X to the N yet. So M equals log base A of X. That's the first thing. Well, I'm going to do my relabeling. So I can rewrite this as A to the power of M equals X. And again, that's just using, uh, or just switching into exponential notation. So the next thing I'm going to do is simply raise both sides to the power of n. Okay, so, so far so good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the logarithm, so I'm going to take log base a of both sides, and m times n uh, will just be m times n using properties of exponents. And then we would have log base A of X raised to the power of N. Okay, so, so all we did was we took a power of both sides and then we put a logarithm out front. But now I'm going to use this cancellation property, the second one. It says if you have a logarithm with base A and then A to some exponent, it says we're just left over with whatever exponent that is. So on the left side we have log base A of A raised to the M times N. Well by that cancellation property, we're just simply left with m times n. But now I'm going to use our relabeling, right? We can fill in the fact that m actually is the same thing as log base a of x. So now on the left side, what we're left with is again, well, m is log base a of x. Okay, the n's still hanging out, so that's getting multiplied. Again, over here on the right side, we have log base a of x raised to the power of n. And the order that we multiply doesn't matter, so hey, let's put the n out front. We have n multiplied by log base a of x equals log base a of x raised to the power of n. So we have now justified that, that power property. Okay, so all we did was just a, a relabeling, threw in some exponents, put logarithms back into it, and then just use the cancellation property. Let's do, let's do the product one next since that's what I had written down. So log base A of X times Y, we want to show that that equals log base A of X plus log base A of Y. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to do a relabeling. I'm going to let M equal log base A of X. I don't know, let's call this other one n, let's call it whatever. So m equals log base a of x, n equals log base a of y. Well, let's see what happens here. Um, if we multiply, let's rewrite, let's do, okay, let's do the same thing first, excuse me. So let's rewrite these, just like we did a second ago. Let's put them in our exponential notation. So a raised to the power of m equals x, 
a raised to the power of n equals y. Well, let's just multiply these together, right? Eventually, we need to form this product, x times y, to see what happens. So x times y, that's going to be the same thing as a to the m times a to the n. And now what I'm going to do is use properties of logarithms. So a to the m times a to the n, that's going to be a to the power of m plus n. And then I'm going to take the logarithm. I'm going to take log base a of both sides. So log base a of x times y, that equals log base a of a raised to the power of m plus n. But again, now we can use this cancellation property. We'll just be left with m plus n. And now we can just go back and uh, use our, our, our labeling. So on the left side, we've got log base a of x times y. That equals m plus n. But again, we said m was log base a of x and n was log base a of y. And again, we've now proven the, that product property. To do the last one, it's almost identically the same, except we'll just throw in some division. So last but not least, let's show that log base a of x divided by y equals log base a of x minus log base a of y. So the same thing, I'm going to call the first term on the right, let's label that as m. And let's label the other one as n. So m is log base a of x, n is log base a of y. Likewise, if we use our, if we convert it into exponential notation, we'll get that a to the m equals x a to the n equals y. Again, technically, uh, if I using proper math notation, you should have the errors going both ways. So I'm just kind of being a little, a little informal there. But let me put them on there both ways because we're supposed to be anal when we do mathematics. And again, that's important. So we've got x equals a to the m, y equals a to the n. Well, instead of multiplying, let's divide x divided by y. Well, that's a to the m divided by a to the n. Well, when we divide, we subtract. So we have a to the m minus n. And now, just the same thing uh, that we did a second ago. We'll take log base a of the left side. We'll take log base a of the right side. But now we can use our cancellation property. Again, on the right side, we'll just be left with m minus n. And now, again, let's just do our relabeling. m is the same thing as log base a of x. And n is log base a of y. And now we've justified the, the quotient property. We've shown that log base a of x divided by y, that's the same thing as log base a of x minus log base a of y. So again, when you first see these properties, I think it feels a little bit like overkill. It feels like you know logarithms are making things just more miserable. But again, one of the, the big mechanical advantages, one of the important things about logarithms is that in some sense you're taking a product, and you know, okay, so products can be sometimes a little complicated. Somehow by throwing in logarithms, you end up turning somehow a product into addition. So somehow you're going from, from multiplication in a sense to addition. And I think most of the time, most people would consider, hey, it's easier to do addition than to do multiplication. And the same thing, somehow we're going from division to subtraction. And that, that turns out mechanically, uh, again, when you're trying to simplify problems to be, to be a benefit. So again, if you're not seeing all the uses for these just yet, uh, if, you're, if you're kind of new to, to logarithms, uh, depending on how your course is structured, hopefully you'll see at least some uses for them. Again, hopefully you'll just see these sort of mechanical manipul manipulations and see that there's a benefit in them there. Um, but again, very useful stuff. And uh, before I, I start talking too long about how exciting logarithms are, because um, you may not believe me, 
let me leave it there. But again, I hope these proofs make sense. All you're doing is uh, just doing a relabeling, using the definitions, using the cancellation properties, and then properties of exponents to justify these.